Hi everyone. What? This is recording 112 too. I was just finishing up this video. What how? How? Cuz I'm not even on number 112 right now. Okay. So I I was just finishing up the video that I just po- well, they're all going to be posting together. And it's called Story Time Met a Man That Was Giving Reptilian. <laughs> I thought that was a funny, like a little cute title. So anyways, but I was supposed to be redoing this thing about Stranger Things because I think I forgot about it. Um, And so anyways, I was listening to this, um, this gentleman um, on on YouTube. I'm feeling really animated today. I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling really animated. Okay. Let me, um, let me get a little bit more serious. Okay. (laughs) Let me get a little bit more serious, okay? Okay, so, um, I was listening to this gentleman, and he was talking about, uh, dolphins, and I was like, wait, I feel like I have had encounters with dolphins in dreams, and I have, and it's the Stranger Things, um, connection, and I forgot that I deleted the Stranger Things, um, off of here, so this is going to touch on a lot of stuff, and I'm going to name them because I'm probably going to forget as I start talking. Look, there goes that Dodge Charger. This Dodge Charger just pulled up as I was finishing that other video, and he literally has Ifa on on his license plate. I kid you not. And you know what's so interesting about Ifa, right, is that um, I remember a while ago... Uh, I think this one is in 2021 or was it 2022? Let me think about it. It could have been 2022. It could have been sometime last year. Um, yeah, yeah, it was. It was around the time I had the Poseidon dream um, with like the Ark and building the Ark and stuff like that. I think I posted that one. I think I reposted it. Um, and anyways, I ended up having this dream where there was a name Oh, look at Georgia. License plate. I lived in Georgia very briefly. Was not my favorite. Definitely can tell you that. But it's got 93 on the license plate. I dreamed about the number 39 last night and 66. Okay, focus, CD. Okay, focus. So, anyways, um, so see, I didn't already forgot what I was supposed to be talking about. Okay, let me bring it back. Hmm. What was I talking about again? Um, I'm going to definitely have to do some notes. I'm going to have to do some notes because my brain with like freestyling and stuff. <laughs> this is not a thing, okay? Um, okay, what was I talking about, you guys? Um, hmm. Oh, Ifa. Yeah, and then this uh, dream where I saw a name and it was like, B L L Y R. Now I have been doing a lot of research into the mistletoe, into the holly king and the oak king, the wren, um, and all of these things. The holly tree. I think I said that. And there was uh, there's also this connection to Daro, um, the name Daro. Um, 713, which I found out in Chaldean numerology that my name is connected to 137. Um, so it's all connected. It's just very interesting. 713, 137, 173, 317. Um, and it's really interesting because everything is like checking out. It's very wild. Uh, but anyways, so I saw this name and I interpreted it in the dream as both Balder Right? Because Balder has to do with the mistletoe. Balder and also Hird. So I went to go um, listen to someone who was like pronouncing the names of these Norse deities like more correctly. I don't know what, you know, the most correct is. But, you know, it's Odin, you know, kind of like a then Odin, you know, uh, not Odin. And then uh, I think it was Thor. So it's kind of like Tor more than Thor. Um, And then she pronounced, uh, there was another person, I think this is a more Welsh 
pronunciation. Um, and she said that his name is actually Hird. Um, it, it was kind of hard to mimic it. Hird. It's like a Y, T, H kind of at the same time situation. So it's not Lear. <laughs> L-L-Y-R. It's not Lear and it's not Year. It's Hird. Um, so anyways, I was studying into him and his stepwife. I believe her name in the Welsh was pronounced as Ifa. <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not. So his kids were like um, connected to being turned into swans, I think, by this stepmom. And the stepmom's name was pronounced Ifa. <laughs> That's not what it looked like, but she did the pronunciations. And that is how she pronounced it. And I was like, you better get out of here. Right? Because, you know, any person that I look at that really, really studies language and etymology and stuff like that, um, especially if they're kind of like more of like a rogue kind of scholar, um, where they don't just focus on like, you know, the kind of um, uh, teaching methods on how they were taught to pronounce it. Um, a lot of them talk about, you know, of course, that language started out um, depending on sound. So it's not word to word. It was dependent on sound. Now, not to say that that never happens in history, right? Because we're dealing with humans. Humans are very complex and it's very hard to follow a thought pattern of a human because humans don't follow um, just strict organization. Like everything we do is connected to blah, 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 like <laughs> trying to predict the thought patterns and like orc fields and dreams and all the different things outside of patterns that that humans find um, is almost ludicrous. Um, but it's definitely based on sound. And so the sound is um, how they start to interpret the word, right? So someone maybe like a thousand years from now might be like, oh, New Orleans um, was spelling go, G-A-U-X. You know what I'm saying? And like, we don't know if that's how they also pronounce go, like G-O. And it's like, yeah, it it is. And there's French influence and stuff. Um, but it's based on the sound. So French, their O sound is E-U-X, whereas our O sound is just the letter O, but they are the same. And somebody you might not, you know, without studying the French history and stuff like that, or even know about the French history, might not know that those are connected to each other, even though G-O, as in you know, go and that etymology, wherever it says it comes from, might not say that it directly comes from G E A U X because they can't linguistically trace it. Um, but there's many things that influence that influence humans, right? <laughs> you know, like your boo, like your boo thing, right? And then we say um, that it's oh, how do you pronounce? Like, how do you spell bow? Is it B-A-U? Is it is that also bow? But we pronounce it boo. And that's also your boo thing. <laughs> okay, let me get to my point. Because we're about nine minutes in here. And I have not gotten to um, Stranger Things yet. I haven't even gotten to Stranger Things yet, child. Okay, so. Um, so, this dream... I ended up having, oh my gosh, this had to be in, let me really think about it. Um, hmm, this is before Stranger Things came out, and I believe that it was July 2016 that I had this dream. Let me see, when did Stranger Things come out? Or is that when Stranger Things came out? first episode let's see nineteen eighty three you better get out of here november sixth nineteen eighty three a scientist is seen attempting to escape from an unseen 
monster is this stranger things the vanishing of will byers i'm gonna have to go watch that again what you better get out of here that is creepy because i missed that 1983 is a whole nether thing um, okay, so that's like around the time that they started Stranger Things. So this was before that, okay? Because I had a dream about it before it came out as a series. But I knew like the last time I talked about this, I looked it up. So I can't remember if that's like the day the Stranger Things started or the day that I had the dream. Um, so I had a dream before this, okay? So <laughs> this timeline is kind of crazy because wait, hold on a second. Because I need to know... Um, for some reason, and I know they are not the same people, but I always get Stan Lee and Hugh Hefner mixed up for some reason. When did Hugh Hefner die? When did Hugh Hefner die? Okay, 9-27-2017. Okay. Um, yeah, because he was like in another part of the dream and I'm not sure... I think it must have been Stan Lee in this dream, though. And I know he died. He died later, like before uh, 2020 kicked off. Um, okay, so I'm not sure why he was in the dream. Um, okay, but let me just say the dream. Okay, let me just say the dream. Okay, so in this dream, <laughs> it was a very short dream, but... Okay, wait, do I want to talk about that one first? Okay, so I'm going to talk about two separate dreams because I had two separate dreams about Stranger Things before I came out, okay? So the first dream that I had was was actually, I did not know that this was connected to Stranger Things. I had no clue what it was connected to. I was like, what are you talking about? Okay, so this first dream, um, and it was around the time that Tyler Henry came out. So I knew that we were either in the first season of Tyler Henry, and I think it was like, it had to be, um, it had to be the end of the first season. Okay, so let me see, when did Tyler Henry come out? Tyler Henry, end of season one. No, not life after death. New. No. Okay, so season one, episode one was January 24, 2016. Okay, so let me see when the last episode of season one was. Because I think I remember being like, oh, I wonder if he is moving to Malibu next season. Okay, yeah, okay, so... The last episode of that was with Amorosa, Carmen Electra, Ashley Hamilton, RJ Mitt. And that was November 3rd, 2016. Okay. And then Stranger Things happened July. So this was in that time period. Okay. So it was like right before it came out. So I ended up having a dream because I remember thinking like, oh, I wonder in season two, is he going to come back and be um, in Malibu? Okay. So in the dream, I was in Malibu. <laughs> and this is funny because during this time, it was a period where I have been looking for most of 2016, like the start of it since January. I was looking into all of this stuff about um, Project Stargate. Now, I had briefly seen Al Bielik about time travel. I did not know who Al Bielik was at that time. I did not look into him at that time, nothing. Um, but from that, I just started looking into Project Stargate. There's like a whole story and I don't want to get into it because I'm going to get, you know, start talking, you know, everything leads into everything, right? That's a whole nother situation. But I'm just saying that there's a lot of San Francisco energy coming up at that time. And so I was looking into California homes, okay? And so what I heard in my head is like, you're going to be moving to a place eventually where the housing cost is much more expensive than what you're used to now. And so they're like, we need to just start looking at more expensive homes so you can get 
acclimated to how much they're going to cost. And so it's kind of like um, if you're, it was kind of like, Didi, you're thinking about your dream home. We have some things in place for you. But you're going to have a hard time following what we're saying if you only focus on homes that are worth four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> They're like, we need to start looking at million dollar homes, two million dollar homes, because they're going to be the norm in the place that you're going to. And then eventually when you want to get to your dream home. So that's what I was doing. And it was a shock factor at first, especially if you're looking at like California homes and stuff like that. What a million dollar house looks like, looks like it's kind of like, uh, let me be a little bit fair. So $800,000, it looks like the hood in New Orleans (laughs) a little bit. I'm not trying to play on them. I'm just saying, okay. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is a million dollars. Like, I feel like in the 90s, a million dollars, like a really, really good house. I'm like, dang, you have to make you have to be able to afford a million dollar house just to have like a decent, like a, a high level, decent house. So anyways, so when I showed up at this house in Malibu um, and I knew that I was meeting a listing agent there, <laughs> I was like, I'm not even looking in Malibu. But then I was like, okay, maybe this is an exercise in um, me thinking outside of my mental box to be like, okay, well, I mean, do I want to have a house on the beach? Because I hadn't even thought about houses on the beach because I knew that they would be even more expensive. But then also I had this fear of like the kids jumping over the rail into the water and getting washed away. So I was just like, nah, I'm not going to like even look at houses. So anyways, the kids weren't with me um, and it was a family member. Okay, now I don't know why this family member particularly was there, but I'm sure for a reason. So me and this family member were waiting for the real estate agent to get to the house. Beautiful house. And the living room was actually in the back of the house. You know how houses have like the front door and then you walk through the hallways and they might have like the seating area, formal living. I mean, formal, yeah, living and dining areas. And then you go to the back of the house and that's like where, um, you know, the kitchen is, and then they'll have the living room, and then they'll have, like, double doors that look out to, like, the backyard. It was kind of sort of set up like that, and that is how I want my house to be, is I want to have, you know, the... I'm saying like den, but kind of like living room area to be really cozy and comfortable, like more of where we take like our intimate friends that we really, really, you know, know and are really comfortable with. And then so we can be able to cook dinner and talk and the kids can be outside and play and we can still look at them, right? Very functional house. Um, And so I was like, yeah, I'm liking this. So there wasn't a backyard. There was a living room, but the back where the backyard would be was actually the ocean. And so I was like, ooh, (laughs) I don't know about that because you didn't have a backyard space pretty much. You had the ocean, which, you know, I was like, okay. So anyway, so I'm looking around the house. This family member is there and I'm still kind of confused as to why the family member is there because I don't feel like I invited her there. Um, And so I'm like, okay, interesting. So we're waiting on the um, real estate agent. Finally, the real estate agent comes in and he's with Tyler Henry. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, Tyler. So me and Tyler start talking about mediumship things. I start telling him, you know, I'm like, I really commend what you do because I know that you probably get to see a lot from spirit and a lot that's unsettling. And so anyways, I'm just telling him about, you know, the different things that pretty much I would be too frightened to even tap into being a medium. Um, And so we start talking about it. He starts telling me about, you know, different things that he does to help. It was a good conversation. So anyways, I realized that he was also looking at this house in Malibu. And so we had a conversation. He was like, you know, I really enjoy this house. Are you really sold on it? And if not, I can go to a different house. And I was like, to be honest, I don't even know why I'm out here in Malibu because I'm not even looking for a house in Malibu. So I'm like, you could totally take it. I think we're just here just looking around. And so he goes off to the side and he talks to the real estate agent, right? I'm gonna have to go back and see if he ever went to Malibu because I don't even know if I checked on that. But I could have and totally forgot about it. But um, but anyway, so he goes off with the real estate agent and, you know, to talk numbers and stuff like that because he sold on getting this house. Now, as I am looking around, I decided to, you know, just stay and look around. And I'm really, really fascinated by this huge ocean. Well, beach, right? I guess it's Malibu Beach. I don't know. And so 
as I'm looking at it, me and this family member, she's standing next to me and she's looking out into this vast ocean. And we start to realize that the house has started to sink into the water. Like, and it's not that like it's falling into the water, but it feels like it's almost being lowered deeper into the ocean. So I'm like, what's going on? And so I'm like, this is strange. And so she's like, this is strange. I'm like, yes, what's going on? And so as we're peering out, we start seeing these huge killer whales. I kid you not. And so they are so huge that we are just in freeze mode. Like I couldn't even move my legs. I couldn't even really think. I was just like, what, what is it in my head? I'm like, what's the contingency plan for this? <laughs> I'm like, what are we even supposed to do right now? Because, like, in this moment, you realize just, like, how small you are in, like, a human body in comparison to, like, this huge whale. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so I'm like, what is the security system on this house? How do we deal with whales, you know? So in my head, I'm like, well, whales are nice animals. And I'm really just scared because it's so huge, right? And then that's when I start to see that there's not just one killer whale. There's five of them. And so I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what are we going to do? So, they like, they weren't being aggressive or anything. They were just huge. And I was just like, what if they accidentally hit this house? Even if it's an accident, they could, like, flick us all the way back to New Orleans from here. And so I'm like, oh my gosh. But, you know, Tyler and this innocent agent are still over there just chilling, having a good time talking. So I'm like, okay. Um, so the next thing I know, the whales are a lot closer now. It was like the blink of an eye and they were like right up on the glass almost. Almost. Like they weren't actually touching the glass, but they were like close to where it was getting hard for me to see their whole body. So I was like, I think that they are going to hit the house. That's when I started freaking out. I'm like, they're going to hit the house. Child, when I tell you this family member skedaddled, when I tell you she got her feet and she flew, okay, she skedaddled so fast. And I was like, mm. so I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right <laughs> I mean didn't check to make sure I was okay didn't grab to make sure but I mean I didn't really expect much anyway but I was just like wow so I'm like I guess we really need to go but by this time so this is where it got weird so there's like a blackout that's what I can describe in the dream sometimes this happens in the dream it's very interesting it's like a blackout for a second and the next thing I know <laughs> there are these double doors and it was like two different sets of double doors. If you saw first season of Stranger Things, you know what I'm talking about. And they had those red and blue kind of lights. And it was like they were not supposed to open those doors, but they opened the doors. So the doors opened and there was a huge wave that came in and everything in the house looked like it got washed off but I was still standing where I was so I was very confused because I didn't know what was going on I was like child what is this and so it was like the emergency lights were on woo, woo, woo. you know it was going crazy but I wasn't drowning I didn't fall over I wasn't being pushed by the wave nothing I was just standing there so I was like, this is very strange. Next thing I know, everything cleared up. I kid you not, everything cleared up. And I turned around. And when I turned around, Tyler Henry and the real estate agent were gone. Uh, the family member had been skedaddled. Um, everything in the house was perfectly fine. And now there was this family, which I knew because I have remembered somewhere in the midst of all this chaos. I saw them. I, li I literally... <laughs> I literally saw them shape shift from big old huge killer whales into white human beings. <laughs> you know, into white human beings. Okay, like European descent. Because sometimes I see like 
actual people who are the color of white, which I know have no association to an ethnicity or a race or anything like that, you know, pigmentation or nothing, they're just white. Um, But these were like European descent people, okay? So I was like, yo, get me out of here because what? So there's a family. There was a man. He had blonde hair. And actually, I have seen him before. Now that I'm thinking about it, I know exactly who this is. And I did not make that connection until just now, which is very unsettling. Um, Now that I'm really thinking about it. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm, that's very interesting. Um, So there's like this dad figure. I'm going to call him a dad figure because he was not a dad. We're going to get to that. He was a dad figure. He had blonde hair. Like, I know exactly what he looks like. And it's so interesting. I'm feeling like this, like, this release, like, on the right side of my brain right now. So I must be really tapping into something. Um, So then he had, like, a wife-like figure. <laughs> um, And then there were, like, three kids. So there was a younger boy. There was, like, um, a middle-aged, like, young man. And then there was, like, a kind of in-between-them girl. Okay. And those were like his kids. Okay. So this is so crazy. So this guy was giving killer vibes. Okay. So I was like, oh, like killer whale for him is like actual killer. So he came in there. He started just making food in the kitchen, but he wasn't eating it. He was trying to give it to me. And something about his vibes, I was like, I'm not about to eat his food. I am not about to eat his food. I'm not, I'm not about to be dinner. I don't know what the vibes are, but I'm not feeling it. And I'm not about to eat this food from him. So he made this whole elaborate dinner and everything to feed me. And I was like, oh, no, thank you. I'm so full from all that water that just came into this house. <laughs> it's really funny because, you know, like I... I'm generally not, like, a play-along person, and you can tell because I start saying things that are, like, really obvious. Like, actually, all that water that just magically disappeared all of a sudden, um, I'm still full on that. So, I'm not going to be eating anything, but thanks for your, like, gourmet meal that none of you look like you eat food. So, anyways... So he gets to talking to me because I guess by me not eating his food and me recognize... Like, him recognizing that, I guess... I'm more intelligent than he thought. He was like, oh, okay, well, I'll just tell you what I'm here for. And so he let me know, child, 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 the things that I hear in dreams sometimes, I'm like, this this whole universe is like bad stuff crazy. I'm not going to be lie to you. It's bad stuff crazy. Child, so... The woman was standing up in the kitchen, but it it looked like she was not allowed to sit down. So he was obviously like the dictator over this family. And the three kids looked very, very uncomfortable. Okay, so the two younger ones, the middle girl and the little boy were sitting down. And then the older kind of young adult guy was standing up. Okay, and they all looked uncomfortable. And I didn't know where to sit down. So I just went to go sit down on the couch so I could at least sit down. If it was about to get crazy, at least I can have some rest before it got crazy, okay? And so he started letting me know that they were a part of a specific family. Let's say that. A specific family, a specific bloodline. And in their bloodline, um, they actually eat other members of the family. And so I was like, hold on. <laughs> hold on a second. And he said that they particularly target the weakest person of the bunch. Now, that could be the youngest child. It could be the wife. Um, It usually hardly is ever the dad in the family, the male sperm donor in the family. That's usually never the one because he gets something passed on to him from the previous fathers that like automatically makes him not the weakest one. He gets some type of energy exchange from the previous fathers, um, something that they pass on to him during this whale shape-shifting initiation or something, okay? And so um, he was basically asking me my advice on which of his children he should eat because he knew which one was the young the youngest one was the weakest one in the bunch and that the youngest one was actually like you know slowing the family down that's the one that he wanted to eat but then he also wanted to eat the older son because the older son was very arrogant and possibly trying to take over you know whatever um 
And so I guess he thought that either one would be a good option. So I was like, um, this is like not like the way you should do things. I'm like, I mean, this could be a weaker person to you, but weakness is a temporary thing. Like you could strengthen him and then you'd be eating one of your biggest assets. I I just don't understand what they've been teaching you. And I'm like, you could eat this one because his ego is too big or whatever. And you want to make sure you have somebody strong to pass on the lineage. Or you could just like teach him about arrogance, possibly. I mean, I don't know. It seems to make sense to me. Like there is such a thing as teaching things. Like everything doesn't have to come exactly natural for them to develop into it so I was like yeah you definitely shouldn't eat none of your kids like you're wilding and then I told the wife I'm like and in this situation I'm not putting you on the chopping block I'm not saying you should be eating but you literally birthed these kids out of your own loins and I'm saying it nicely out of your loins you pushed them out and you're just going to let him pass a judgment that they are weak and that they need to be eaten? <laughs> I'm sorry, but if I'm going through, I mean, I love my kids, okay? that That's the first thing that I want to say, because I don't want you to get it misunderstood how I'm saying this, because I'm, like, taking on the energy of this guy, okay? Um, first and foremost, you're not about to eat my kids, because I love my kids, and I don't believe in people eating kids, right? Clearly, point blank, period. But when you're talking to a person where they don't share the same values as you, they eat kids over there and they find with eating kids over there. So you have to talk to them in a different type of tone. Empathy and stuff like that is not going to work on someone uh, and not work on because it's not like, you know, you're doing it to work on people's emotions. But I'm saying people do that stuff, like regardless if we think that it's, you know right or not it happens whether we think murder is right or not it happens it's an actual real thing that happens so I was like you know um you're actually the weakest one here because you are actually like the ship that births these little mini ships and you're gonna let this man decide what happens to your children that's absolutely ludicrous to me I'm like he didn't push them out he didn't carry them for nine months he didn't nurse them to this point you've been working on these kids for like at least 11 years with the youngest one and just because um in this season right now he's showing to be not uh, like you know not showing signs of some type of strength of a leader and you're gonna let him just totally take out his whole timeline based on his understanding of what is weak and what is strong I'm like you're really the head of this family and I don't understand why he even has a say in the first place Now, that's from their perspective, right? Because I I agree with men and women being equal. But I'm talking about energy dynamics in a situation where he does not believe that she is equal. He believes that she just kind of pops him out and then he has the whole say of everything. And I'm like, well, he's really got the game messed up. (laughs) Because he really shouldn't have no say. Like, for real, for real. Like, he's actually the weakest link in this right now. But anyway, so I'm like, yeah, how about no? How about like, let's not eat any of the kids. So of course, he didn't like me saying that. So he got in a rage. And so I just took her kids and I I left both of them behind. So I was like, come on. So we all ran and left. Okay. So um, we left and got out of this place. I don't know what happened to the parents, but the kids, they were safe. Okay. So when they left, we ended up in this family member's house. And I... Um, I guess that made something else upset. <laughs> that made something else upset because then it was like another flash and I don't know what happened to the kids after that. I literally don't know what happened to them after that. But there's another flash and I wasn't with the kids anymore. So the next thing I know, I was in Hawaii. <laughs> I was in Hawaii and I was with um the spiritual guru. And the spiritual guru um, was a shape-shifting dolphin. So I'm like, okay, it's the dolphins and the whales. <laughs> it's the dolphins and the whales. So this shape-shifting dolphin guru, um, and she was like a reflection of myself because um, like in this dream, she had my body type. 
um which in waking reality she does not have my body type um like at all like we're like almost like direct opposites in a lot of ways um and so anyway so she had my body type and she was a shape-shifting dolphin so she was still when I saw her she was still in the transitionary not transitionary because she wasn't transitioning to a human she was very comfortable sitting in the middle of dolphin head human body okay so it was like she didn't have to pick either side she didn't have to like oscillate between the two or like hide what she was okay so she was cooking a meal and I was definitely about to partake in this meal okay I was definitely about to eat this meal up and so we were talking and she was letting me know that she was building a um a uh retreat center which eventually she did build a retreat center now this retreat center was not in Hawaii um, but maybe that could be a retreat center that's coming later is the one in Hawaii, but she did end up building a retreat center, um, that was not in the U.S. proper, I think. Um, so I thought that was very interesting, and she ended up doing that, like, a, a little while after this dream, so it's probably, like, a year or so after this dream. Um, so anyways, we were talking, and we were making dinner, like, together, And she was like, you know, how am I going to get the money to do this retreat center? So we were sitting in the retreat center as she was like, how are we going to do a retreat center? And it was so crazy because neither one of us realized that we were already sitting in the retreat center. (laughs) Like we were already sitting in the retreat center as we're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to get the money? So I was like, you don't need to worry about the money. Just just put your content out there, keep inspiring people, and then people will come across your path, and all you have to do is be receptive. All you have to do is receive. I'm like, you're such a giver. You give and give and give. All you have to do is just receive. <laughs> and then I ate the food, and it was so good. It was so delicious. It was so yummy. I was so glad that I ate some. We sat there. We ate together. And I was, like, feeding into her. I'm, like, giving her all of the encouragement and everything. I'm, like, girl, you could do it. You have got it. Like, your information is so necessary and everything. And then as I was, like, transitioning out of that dream, that's when I realized, I'm, like, we're already in the retreat center. It's already here. (laughs) And then I woke up. And the even more interesting part about that is that that guru... I don't remember when the time frame was, but it was a while. It was like at least it was sometime after she actually had the retreat center where she actually did a video where she said that she has always had a fear of whales. I kid you not. I kid you. I kid you not. She literally said, I have a fear of whales. I really like dolphins instead. And I was like, oh my gosh, I saw that in my dreams. (laughs) Okay. I'm like, (laughs) wow. okay so that was the first drew okay so at that point the only thing that I knew was like whales me on some other stuff and I'm really about to go with the dolphin team for real okay um that's the only thing that I knew about it but I thought that that moment where they were shape-shifting I thought it was so weird because it looked like some type of facility and I have seen facilities before that's a whole nother conversation for another day okay so (laughs) this was so crazy this was so crazy so (laughs) oh my gosh this is so crazy so then the next dream I had um and I don't remember the time frame between these dreams but it couldn't have been longer than two months um the next dream I had I had a dream where I was in someone's study okay and in this study um I had a dream about this study again when Hugh Hefner died. And that's a whole nother dream because I saw Anna Nicole Smith in there and everything like that. But um, but in this one, I saw this study that looked very similar to another study that I saw when Hugh Hefner died. It was Hugh Hefner sitting in the seat. But in this dream in 2016, I was in the study and it was like, you know, like a library, like a if you remember, like Wishbone and, you know, there's like the study that's got all the books you know the library and you know stereotypical 
you know vampire movies and creature movies and stuff they always have like this old old study with lots of books and like this big old leather chair and stuff like that it was very much that type of scene and i saw either stan lee or hugh hefner child i don't know i feel like it was stan lee this time i feel like it was stan lee this time and i kind of saw like an overlay of him and he was like writing something down on the paper and he was like when they get in here I need you to tell them something so he was like writing down something on the paper and I I don't I remembered it in the dream but it's just been so long that I can't remember what it said on the paper now um but he wrote something down to me and he handed it to me but it was also very weird because it was very much this is so weird this is so weird it reminded me of fringe I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen Fringe because it's such a good TV show. But there's a moment in Fringe when she finds out that parallel universes exist. And there's a moment where the guy, I can't remember his name. um, What's his name? William Bell, I think. I think it was William Bell or something like that. Um, And he is back in time. And it's a memory of him writing something for Olive, for Olivia. And it's like she's interacting with it. It says Namiya. Interesting. Namiya, Namiya. I feel like I've seen that somewhere. Um, Anyways, I'll get to that later. So anyways, where where he's back in time and he's writing something and he knows that she will see it in the future. And so he's interacting with her in this future version where she actually shows up but he was not actually seeing her in that time period he just knew that she was going to get there at some point in the future and so he was talking to her as if he was going to see her and that's exactly what I saw in this dream in 2016 I did not watch Fringe until 2020 okay I did not watch Fringe until six years later okay so it was like he had set up this um hologram or something and he was like handing me this paper and he was like remember what's on it and when that person walks through the door I want you to give them this information so I'm like what what (laughs) and at the time I didn't know he was a hologram I was just like what is going on but I looked at the paper because obviously I couldn't actually grab it but I understood that he was saying to look at the paper and then relay the message to this other person because for some reason that other person would not be able to see this hologram of him or whatever it was look look I kid you not the the lights on the police behind me just turned on I mean it is getting dark outside but all of the lights in the parking lot have not come on just the few behind me as I'm talking about this that's so wild that's wild it's wild this is getting really long okay so (laughs) so I took the message and I remembered it and everything and the person had not walked in yet okay so for whatever reason this person wouldn't be able to see the hologram so he was giving it to me because he knew I would see it and then I would relay the message to the person that was supposed to walk through the doors of his study so as I was waiting for this person to come through the study I started just moving around and looking at the different books that he had in his library so as I'm looking through the books there's this shelf and this shelf has all of these books called stranger things on the spine of the book in all different letters child they've got one book in the spine of the letters like all in cursive stranger things one it's block letter stranger things one it's like Ario print stranger things one of it's like you know on those old cartoons and they would take like ransom notes and they like put pieces of different cut out letters from different magazines and stuff and make a word it was like that with stranger things it was all these books all together and they all said Stranger Things. And I was like, this is so weird because the book didn't have an author on it. <laughs> and um, it didn't have an author and there were no volumes. So it wasn't like Stranger Things Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. It was just all Stranger Things. So I was like, that's strange. <laughs> I'm like, that's strange. <laughs> now the other strange thing... <laughs> 
Now, the other strange thing, I kid you not, the other strange thing, like, I, I get loud when, like, things are just, like, like, I'm really making it click in my head, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is so crazy. The other strange thing is that I have been seeing Leah on the back of license plates. I kid you not, like, it was, like, three days in a row, and I saw Leah, like, twice on different license plates. I mean, some of them could have been the same car on different days, but you get my point. And so I was like, oh, like, the Skywalkers. I have a connection to Skywalkers. Dakinis. Dakinis are called Skywalkers. So I'm like, oh, okay, must be Leah Skywalker. Then I sit down one day, and they're like, no, um, like, it is Leah, but it's also Clea, C-L-E-A. So I'm like, oh, okay, Clea. Okay, and they're like, yeah, because I also have a connection to Cleo and I have um like a higher self that goes by Cleon um and so I was like oh okay Cleo is kind of similar to Cleo and then that's when I come to find out that um the ex-wife of Doctor Strange is Cleo so I'm like oh interesting um so anyways back to what I'm saying so I'm looking at the stranger things on the books and I'm like that's so strange (laughs) that's strange now the other weird thing that I have not figured out yet and I'm sure it's going to be interesting because I ended up having this dream about Makat Brooks and then he just did this interview this year that was like absolutely mind-boggling about his trip to Egypt and I had a dream about him back in 2018 Um, And I was like, oh, he's got to be tapped in because this dream is like bananas. He's got to be tapped in. And then, um, yeah, so 2020, that's like four years. It took four years for that to come back around. So anyways, I'm just saying that sometimes I dream about people and that stuff is like spot on and it's wild. So um, the other person that I saw (laughs) in this study, and I'm not sure if I should like use discretion because maybe I should use discretion. But see, it's hard to know when you should use discretion because I'm not sure in what way it's connected. But he's definitely connected to it. Okay, let me just see. Do I use discretion or no? Okay, so I'm not going to use discretion because I don't feel like I don't feel like they're like use discretion. Um. Okay. So the other person that I saw, look, look, all the lights in the parking lot just came on. I'm about to go. I'm about to get up out of here, and not even all of the lights. Just the ones around me. Just I'm about to go. I'm about to get out of here. You start talking about certain stuff. Certain stuff starts happening, and so I know some people would be like, "Oh, it's probably just on a schedule." Like, and that's true. It is probably just on a schedule, and maybe I haven't paid attention to it before. But still, like, even if it is on a schedule that I'm at this place at this time right now, talking about these things, and I'm like debating whether I should, and then the lights come on. It's still in sync, whether it's scientifically explained or whatever explained or not it's it's synced up because that could have been anywhere right now well not literally anywhere but anywhere else a lot of other places anyways okay so as I'm looking at that I noticed that there are also cds on the shelf okay so they're not directly next to the stranger things they're up a little bit above it and it's all these cds and that's what made me really um grab them and realize you know and look at them and see what they were because i'm like why are there cds on his shelf this is a bookshelf and every last cd now there were different cds um and i kind of sort of remember like maybe one of them was like all red with like you know black kind of um you know design patterns or something and one was kind of like a darker cover that was like maybe gray or something like that I can't exactly remember um but they were all from this artist named Dave East it was all Dave East albums and in that dream I could just, like I promise you I had never heard of Dave East when I actually was holding the CD in my hand I was like like Dave East is that like <laughs> is that like a like a parallel version of Kanye West or something like who's Dave East I had not heard of Dave East do you hear what I'm saying I had not heard of him so I didn't know what Stranger Things was and it was such like a strange title that I didn't even really think to look it up and see if it was something 
Um, but Dave East, I did look up and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a rapper. And I remember talking to Ray about the dream and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a guy named Dave East. And I think he had heard of Dave East. He probably had heard of him. I had not. Um, and so I was like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. But that's like as far as I went with that because I didn't really know what it was talking about. Um, and then I heard like one of his songs and I, I like I was like, no, I'm not going to listen to a whole album of this. <laughs> I'm not going to listen to a whole album of this. Um, and so, yeah, then like it it was the show was already running because I think that I got introduced to the show by like the seventh episode but my cousin called me one of my cousins called me and she was like oh my gosh there is a tv show that you have got to watch and I'm like oh what tv show is it and she was like it's called stranger things child she told me that and I almost fell out of my chair I could you not I almost fell out of my chair and then she called me back like a little while after that, after she had told me, but it was like just so mind boggling that I think I forgot to watch it. She's like, you really need to watch Stranger Things. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been seeing Stranger Things everywhere since you told me that. And I really probably do need to watch it. And then I watched it and that's when I saw that episode. I don't even remember what episode it was, but it was like the episode where they went to that facility and they were like, don't touch this. And then something happened where those black things started crawling through or whatever. I don't even remember. I have to go back and watch it because I didn't remember William Byers in 1983, but I didn't have a connection to 1983 at that time. So I probably didn't even think to think about it. But I had a QHHT session and 1983 was super significant in my QHHT session. Um, But that's all I can even talk about right now because I'm blowing my mind just recounting this right now. I'm blowing my mind just thinking about this right now because I'm like, what? It's 1983. I didn't have my first QHHT. That wasn't even my first one. That was my second QHHT session. I didn't even have that until 2021. So this is like 2016 to 2021 is how many? Wait, 16 and 20. Five years late, look, some more lights just came on. Some more lights just came on. And the Carl Jr. sign just came on. I didn't even notice it was not even on. Um, five years later, in 1983. And now, it's like two years since I've had the QHHT session, where I've even tracked that 1983 was in Stranger Things to connect to the QHHT session in 2021. Um, anyways, life is life is definitely a journey. So... If anything else comes up about Dave East, which I'm sure that it probably will, um, I'll probably keep discretion at that point because the world is crazy. Like, it's wild. And I mean, just even circumstances and how you meet people and stuff like that. So I don't doubt that we probably will meet each other at some point. And his story will probably be like wild. At that point, I'll probably use some discretion. <laughs> Unless he's like, yeah, you could tell my story. So, anyways, unless he wants to come and talk about his story, which is a whole nother situation. Okay, everybody. So, that's what I wanted to talk about today. That was a handful. That was a lot of energy. Um, she shall be. Yeah, and I'm going to have to talk about, like, the... the <laughs> that's a whole nother situation. I'm going to have to talk about, you know, the whole San Francisco, Albia lick and stuff. Because I ended up having a QHHT session about that that's a whole nother conversation then I ended up meeting someone that was possibly a part of SSP secret space program Woo! so anyways oh and it's 519 wow wow and 519 for me is about the same oh it's also 69 the house of cancer um which is the home and yeah I'm like save the kids save the kids okay all right, friends. Oh, look, it's a black man in his Tesla. All right. Okay, everybody. Uh, bye. <laughs>